Or module courtesy of American Petroleum Institute Figure 6, Differential Pressure Control courtesy of American Petroleum Institute Why change? The pros, this is a question everyone should ask before deciding to change the original design of a system or a machine component that has been operating. An important step in a successful conversion from wet seals to dry gas seal is to know all the aspects of new technology. The benefits that well-engineered dry gas seals size TEMS can present are, reliability improvement. The mean dry gas seals failure rate is around 0.175 failures year, meaning that we could expect one failure every six years or so, block, 2005. The larger quantity of accessories in the support system is the cause of the highest percentage of downtime for a compressor using wet seals, Natural Gas Star Partners, 2003. Reduction of unscheduled downtime, as a result of reliability improvement. Elimination of oil leakage into the compressor's sore, avoiding the problems and costs related to process contamination. Elimination of lubrication and control oil contamination with process gas. The sour seal oil reclamation, through degassing tanks into the main oil reservoir, often leads to undesirable oil system contamination. Elimination of the seal oil consumption costs, including the costs to disposal or reclamation of the sour seal oil. Reduction of operating costs. The power loss in dry gas seals is much less, as well the energy to operate the seal oil pumps is eliminated. Reduction of maintenance costs. The wet seal system has many more components that need maintenance effort, e.g., pumps, motors and or turbines, coolers, control valves, relief valves, etc. Reduction of gas emission. The wet seals gas leakage, from the traps vent as well as from sour oil degassing process, is something between 40 to 200 SCFM, while dry gas seals leak at a rate of 0.5 to 3 SCFM, Natural Gas Star Partners, 2003. Page 7 Why change? The cons, unfortunately, every technology has its own limit of shyans. Listed below are the disadvantage dry gas seal systems can present, taken into account the replacement of existing wet seals, necessity of compressor heads machining. In order to provide gas ports and accommodative dry gas seals, it's often necessary to machine compressor heads, Staley, 2003. Changes in compressor rotor dynamics. Fluid seals act as dampers and, so, influence ferritor dynamics characteristics of the compressor's soar, as critical speeds, amplification factor and logarithmic decrement. Therefore, it's necessary to carry out a complete rotor dynamic analysis, RDA, before replacing the oil seal's be dry gas seal. If the results of RDA are unsatisfactory additional damping equipment may be required, Staley, 2003. Highly susceptible to failures due to presence of dirt and or liquid in the gas. The wet seals have much less problems with dirt and or wet gas, while the dry gas seals' reliability depends strongly on a system that assures a steady flow of clean and dry gas into the seal chambers. Reliability can be reduced by transient conditions. During startups, shutdown or idling low speeds, the dry gas seals lose the capacity of develop the pressure force that keep the narrow gap between the ring's faces, being susceptible, so to premature failures of the rings and plants that have frequent shutdowns. Higher prices. A dry gas seal cartridge is much more expensive than a floating ring oil seal assembly. A tandem drig seal assembly costs between US 50, 0.00 and US 60, 0.00, while a floating ring oil seal assembly costs between US 20, 0.00 and US 30, 0.00 higher assembly complexity. The dry gas seal's support system is less complex than fluid seals, but the dry gas seal assembly itself is much more complex. The maintenance team only replaces the gas seal cartridges, and sends the used cartridge to refurbishment and static and dynamic test on a test rig in the manufacturer facility. In developing, or underdeveloped, countries this means that seals have to be repaired abroad, and more spare seal cartridges have to be kept in storage than in a country where facilities with test rig are available. Susceptible to failures due to reverse rotation. The non symmetrical spiral grooves are not able to create the pressure force to lift off the primary ring if the compressor runs in reverse rotation. So, if reverse rotation occurs, the seal's faces can fail. If reverse rotation is a probable occurrence, bidirectional dry gas seals, which use a symmetrical groove profile, should be considered. Additionally, the unidirectional dry gas seals are different for each compressor end, thus requiring at least two per seal assemblies for each compressor. Necessity of barrier gas. It's necessary to avoid that the bearing lubrication oil reaches the seal faces. 
To doing so, a barrier seal is incorporated in the outboard end of the dry gas seal assembly, and barrier gas is injected into the barrier seal chamber, figure 3. For safety reasons in most cases nitrogen is used as barrier gas. Therefore, a reliable nitrogen source may be necessary. Case history, a syn gas compressor seals conversion six years ago, in 2000, the Petrobras Amonia and Urea plants located in the petrochemical complex of Camassari, Brazil, were revamped in order to increase the capacities to 1,500 metric ton day. In both plants, several technological upgrades were carried out, as an effort to modernize the process and the equipments. One of these upgrades was the Page 8 Replacement of the Synthesis Gas Compressor Shaft Seals, from floating ring oil seals to dry gas seals. The synthesis gas train consists of two compressor cases, driven by two steam turbines with a total output of 30, 400 horsepower, 22, 670 kW. The low-pressure compressor case suction pressure is 370 to 25.5 kg FCM to a, and the discharge pressure is 927 to 65.2 kg FCM to a. The high-pressure compressor case suction and discharge pressure are 884 to 62.2 kg FCM to a, and 2, 218 to 156 kg FCM to a, respectively. Over the years, the plant had experienced several precise contamination events of oil from the floating ring oil seals system. Adding to this were thickests of sour seal oil disposal. For these reasons Fesson gas compressor seals were upgraded to dry gas seals. A proposal was requested from the Comprars SOR OEM based only on the synthesis gas composite Cheyenne in normal conditions. The proposed design was installed, two sets of unidirectional tandem Driga seals with standard seal gas support system panels, for each compressor cases, figure 4. Each seal gas panel consisted of a standard filter Cheyenne module, figure 5, a standard differential pressure control module, figure 6, and a vent leakage monitoring module. The sources of seal gas supply to the panels were the compressor cassette discharges. The compressor cases had seals chambers had towed machine to fit the new dry gas seals and fezial gas panels connections ports. In the low pressure case the seals modification has been a success. The plant has operated for more than six years with the seals installed in 2000, without any failure. The low pressure case seals performance has proven that the existing wet seal conversion to dry gas seal can be very successful. But, unfortunately, this has not been the case with high pressure compressor case. In five years of operation, from 2000 to 2005, the HPK seals have failed seven times, presenting an unacceptable failure rate of 1.4 failures per year. What has been gone wrong with the HPK seals conversion? Why was the seals reliability so much different between the two cases? First, consider a Cheyenne was not given to the ammonia synthesis reactor catalyst reduction in startup after plant turnaround. During the reduction there was liquid water in the gas flow to the recycle suction. So, the unexpected water was the cause of the first HP Cassidy gas seals failure, immediately after the seal sweer installed. Less than a year after the first failure, the HP case seals failed again. This time a black powder was found in the seals chambers, clearly indicating that gas was not as clean as thought. Investigation determined the dirt was coming from the ammonia synthesis reactor catalyst. The filtration module of seal gas panel was not designed to cope with this kind of dirty gas. To minimize this problem, the HPK source of seal gas supply was changed to a point downstream of the synthesis reactor preheater, 121 C, where the gas is cleaner and dry. But during transients and startups and shutdown the seal gas supply point had to be changed back to compressor discharge, upstream of the discharge cooler, causing saturation of the filters. During transients there was not enough differential pressure between the seal gas and the process gas and towed compressor case. This allowed the dirty process gas to enter the seal's chambers causing wearing off seals, figures 7 and 8.